Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Pokemon Violet. In the last episode, we further pushed our way towards furthering our ventures within our Yuva Academy stories, meeting the school's nurse Miriam, and her woes of becoming the new health professor of the school, helping Clavel further understand the students of the Academy, and help them become a little bit more, I guess you could say, hip with the kids. And finally, start our understanding of the home economics professor, Mr. Sagawaro, learning of his passion of furthering our knowledge in all things connected to making the perfect picnic possibly happen. The perfect class for Arvin, honestly, if you really think about it. But with that being said, honestly, we have done quite a decent amount so far with it. And we are also understanding how these class storylines actually work now. So, there is a midterm, and then there's a an actual, like, obviously, like, end of exam for the class. Basically, the ending area, obviously. So, basically, you have to get to the midterm, and you have to get to the final exam, is what I understand for these. Since Sagawaro is our first one when it comes to those kind of teachers. But that's how those ones work. So, anything attached to a specific class, you have to finish the class in order to be able to progress in their storyline. You can meet them, but it doesn't mean that you can do it. So we did Sagawaro's first one early on accident, but we are actually progressing through it though, thankfully. So now that we understand what we're doing, let's definitely begin the next um, half of the home economics courses, since we still have three more classes until we're done here since it's three for midterm and then three for finals, is what I understand. But, here we go. Let's see how Mr. Sagawaro is doing. Since we still got a little bit left to do for him, class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. <laughs> we'll definitely try not to be, since, honestly, it's been a couple days since I've been able to record. Um, I ended up going to an actual WWE show, which was pretty cool. It was my first real one. I've been trying to go to a real one, but every time I, you know, got tickets, both ended up being the events where they come to your town and then they just wrestle. They don't do any, like, the show stuff. So I got kind of unfortunate draws both those times. But this time I actually bought the tickets, so I knew where I was, what I was supposed to do this time around, which was pretty cool. And I actually got to do quite, um, some pretty cool stuff. I got to see, like, John Cena and stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. But, um, honestly... Yeah, I ended up getting sick after that, so I just wanted to be honest, just because uh, I hate getting sick, and it seems to happen a lot recently just because of, you know, every time I leave the house it seems like I get sick, which is unfortunate. So I just wanted to let you guys know, So because it's been a little bit, I've been really missing to record, honestly, so hopefully I'm back and I'm, you know, not going to get sick anytime soon, is what I'm trying to say. But, let's continue with Mr. Sagawaro here. Put away your phones. It's time to be in class. Tough some of you had to retake the midterm. Uh, though some of you had to retake the midterm, Sam, multiple times. I'm glad to say that the majority of the class passed without issue. Feel honored to see that knowledge and skills indispensable for daily life have taken root in all of you. Yeah, I trust that you will work just as hard on your life skills in this second half of the course as well. Let us now turn our attention to the topic of the day, which was inspired by a question I received on the subject of meal powers. A student who asked this question is a young man who enjoys culinary arts. Probably Arvin. He tells me that he regularly researches culinary techniques on his own, pays careful attention to the ingredients he uses. He also spends day and night studying all aspects of the culinary arts. Yep. Despite this, he is baffled by the inability to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. So tell me, Master Spooks, since you did quite well on your midterm exam, what should our... Uh, this young man... Arvin, yep. It says R right at the beginning. This young man do to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. Well, let's see here. You should make food more often. You should make food with more with other people or orphan. Um, that's a good question. 
make food more often. That would definitely be good. I don't know if you can bring people into picnics. That's one thing I'm not sure about, just because, you know, I've been solo this entire time, so obviously I wouldn't know much. The only time I've ever got to play multiplayer in this game is when I have went to Kraken's house and, you know, let him play one of the versions for a little bit, because he still hasn't gotten his. But, honestly, that is a very good question. Uh, you should make food more often, I guess? I could say Arvin. Um, let's go Arvin. I don't know if we fail if we say it like that. Um, uh -huh. can I disclose the identity of the certain male snoop who enjoys culinary arts? I got them both to react to it, though. <laughs> but that was funny. May very well be, Arvin, but it may not be. Hopefully I don't have to answer that right. To increase the effectiveness of meal powers, your sandwiches must be filled with many different ingredients. For a single person, this may prove difficult. But if you prepare a sandwich with others, you will be able to handle a larger serving of bread. Okay. That's something I would not have known, because I have yet to do anything like that, so... Okay. Interesting. With a larger base to start with, it becomes quite simple to add more ingredients to a sandwich. Which, in turn, makes it possible to receive meal powers of increased effectiveness. This applies more broadly as well. Dealing with difficult issues, working with others to solve, that issue may be the best course of action. I'm sure that Arvin will likewise work with friends to craft your sandwiches in the future. Well, but uh, you kind of disclosed that information, buddy. <laughs> uh, uh, now, to any of the male students matter press, so I would ask that you do not pride too deeply, of course. Time together has come to an end for today. Bid you all for will. Okay. Interesting. I like how he says that he couldn't disclose it, but discloses his. Discloses it himself. Not once, but twice, and then we disclose it on accident, which is kind of funny. Huh. Okay, well, not on accident for us, but still, that's pretty funny. But, it looks like what you say in the classes doesn't matter. You can answer them, but you can go with a joke answer if you want to, which is good. So the only thing that does affect us is the midterms in the final exams, then. Okay. So that's good to know, just in case. Let's continue with Mr. Saigwaro. We're going to go through all the classes until we actually, you know, progress on the storylines. Because the thing is, is, well, that's how we'll actually be able to do them. So might as well just finish them all off for, for a teacher, and then we'll actually get to do them. Is the best way to put it, basically. Huh, put away your phones it's time to begin class. While you're out performing field work with one of your Pokemon walking alongside you, have you ever noticed, um, changes in its coloration? No. Oh, okay, I understand what you mean. Now, I don't mean, uh, that it's some kind of suddenly becomes a shiny Pokemon or any nonsense like that. Okay. Uh, speaking of it becoming filthy. Uh, is that a possibility? Oh, go on battle, they get hurt by moves and used against them. They get battled, uh, battered by wind and rain, get covered in sand and mud. I under I noticed that with Maridon when you're up in the, like, snowy areas like Glassadale Mountain, if you're if it's blizzarding, he'll actually get, like, a little bit of snow on top of his head. But I didn't notice that on any other Pokemon. It's actually a feature. You get in, uh, the word filthy. I've seen many a trainer walking about with their adorable little Pokemon without addressing this issue. It's deplorable. Okay, then. Let me ask this question of someone who I'm sure not tolerates such a shameful conduct. Oh, yes, Master Spooks. What should you do if your Pokemon is dirty? Clean it up, pat it on the head, nothing. I clean it up. Oh, perfect. Uh, correct. No one could count on you to provide me such an answer. Okay, well that's kind of obvious, but okay. When your Pokemon are dirty clean them, this is of course simply common sense. While you're having a picnic, you can approach your Pokemon on your team and perform a variety of actions. Huh, I didn't notice that the Pokemon became, like, darker or, like, brighter in color. It's kind of weird. Huh. Is that really a thing? I didn't notice it. I did... 
Like, I did do it on, like, uh, the washing mechanic on other Pokemon, I, but I never did it on my main team, just because I never thought it was a thing to even do that. I just thought that built, like, friendship or whatever. That's weird. Huh. Okay, then. Uh, one such agent is putting them through what I like to call them Pokemon Wash, in other words. You were able to clean them up. You start by getting your sponge leathered up and soapy bubbles as a gently and carefully scrub. Your Pokemon. Which Pokemon is this covered in soapy bubbles? Okay, good thing we get to learn how to take a bath. Everyone, uh, including myself, are starting to take notes. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> That's interesting. But it is a home economics course, so it makes sense, I guess. Bubbles will emasculate the filth, and you simply wash the waves with the spray of water. This will get your Pokemon clean and uh, shining bright as a territory. Okay. It is certainly quite a bit of work, but this will also restore its pre and cure status conditions. Now that makes a little bit more sense on that, so I could see that being a feature. I don't see it actually change during the coloration of your Pokemon. I just don't know. I would not even notice that. Just because uh, that doesn't really seem like something that would happen. But okay, if it does, that's interesting. However, some Pokemon may have parts of their bodies that don't want scrum dirt that they would rather not get wet. Be sure to keep this in mind when cleaning your Pokemon. Okay. Now the most, most important part. Uh, that I most must mention is that some Pokemon like to be dirty. Really? Though I'll contradict myself by saying this, please do not rem do remember that cleaning your Pokemon is not always the kind thing to do. Okay. Time uh, together has come to an end for today. Bid you all farewell. So don't clean Charmander, got it. Because <laughs> if you accidentally extinguish its tail, that is not a good thing. But interesting. Okay. Although that wasn't what he was saying, but basically, that is something that can happen. If you were to, you know, pour water on a Charmander, that's not a good thing, because if you do extinguish its tail, it will, you know, pass away. That's basically what they say in the Pokedex, and based on what they said in the anime, if I remember correctly, too. So, yeah, definitely, definitely not something you want to do. But, Home Economics number 6. So let's see what our final one with Mr. Saguaro is, and then we'll get into our final exam form. And finally be able to progress in the storyline, because apparently we have to do this in order to do it. Which is a little unfortunate. Which, you didn't have to do every single one, but... Well, if we have to do it to get the story, then we'll just all, you know, sit around and... Learn a little bit extra about Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet when it comes to the other mechanics that didn't really get, you know, looked into. Uh, put away your phones, it's time to begin our last class together. Home economics is study of life's necessities. Looking back on our time together, I realized that I focused almost entirely on food. Hope it's not too late to shift to do a discussion of clothing. Another necessity in our last class. Clothing? Well, we can't change our clothing that much, but okay. As I'm sure you are aware, Academy has a air of freedom about it. We provide uniforms for each season to accommodate the diverse climate of Paldea, where students are free to wear whichever style they wish to, um, whenever they please. Okay. You should all um, have your seat four sets of tops and bottoms, one for each, uh, each for spring, summer, and fall. When, when the Academy accepted you. Which we did. If by chance you were not aware of this, you may wish to pursue your, uh, or use your wardrobe. As long as you wear your, our school uniform, the rest of your ensemble needs to not be school issued. This includes your bag, your hat. If you choose to wear one, you may even have a free, uh, free to style your hair. Whatever you wish. Mr. Salvatore's style, for example, would almost certainly have been against school rules when I was boy. Really? That reminds me. There's one more thing you all uh, like to decorate, which, I must say, I find quite charming. Classroom desk, our dorm rooms, our Rotom phones. I think it's probably the Rotom phone, because that would make a lot of sense, because you don't, you can't really do the other things. I wish you could, for, like, your room. I wish you could put some stuff up, like, secret bases, but 
I really don't think that's a feature. If I'm, you know, wrong, then I'm wrong, but I really don't think it's a feature. Because I haven't, you know, thought of... One, I haven't really went to the room. And two, I just don't think it's a thing. Just because it doesn't make any sense with everything we've done. But it would be cool, though. I will say that, if you can. Uh, perfectly correct. That's the most horrible little thing I was speaking of. Oh, it interests me so. Must admit that I'm fascinated by road phones and how to customize them. What's up? How very tricky. So there's a shop called Daily Bird Presents, where you purchase cases for road phones. Yep. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't know that, Mr. Saguaro. I thank you for the that useful bit of information. Shall have to go myself first thing tomorrow to get an adorable case of my own like. <laughs> Forgive me, seems to have gotten a little carried away with my small talk. Uh, as this class is known, um, so I'll make an obvious near to ten, I offer these final words for you, who have been home for everyday life skills with me. My field of study is not so decisive, as the likes of mathematics, for instance, where ten scores might play a part in deciding your future. However, let's go on to cook for yourselves, take care of both months. Sad what to wear in the morning when you're weak. I would be honored if that would me if what I have taught you serves you to smooth it out and enrich your lives, even if only a little. Sentiment was imparted by um, to me by Mr. Hazel and his particular outlook on such matters. Really? Huh, so Hazel taught him a little bit. That's interesting. Mm. Thank you all for the bottom of my heart for seeing this class that we do its end. Our time uh, together has come to a close for today. Prepare to do your best on our final exam. Okay. Interesting. So now we're done with the classroom for Sagawaro. Which is good. So, no more home economics class. But that doesn't mean that we're fully done because we still have to do the final exam first. And then we can actually progress in the story. Okay. So far I'm understanding it. And then, hopefully, you know, the actual stuff when it comes to, you know, doing the other classes is also easy. Because now that we're kind of fully understanding this little way of doing things, I'm starting to understand it a little bit better. Time has come to test how well all of you learned in my class. Let's begin before the information simmering in your brains for the last minute cram session feeds. Okay. Which of the following meal powers makes it easier to come across Shining Power, or Pokemon? Okay, so it's not catching and it's not encounter, but catch or encounter can actually help with that, depending on the Pokemon, apparently. Apparently you can find, um, what do you call it, um, Paradox Pokemon easier if you're using Encounter Power, because they're the only Pokemon that will spawn in the bottom area, which is interesting. I did I don't understand how that works, but apparently that's a thing. But Sparkling Power is the actual one, so Sparkling Power for Shinies. Which of the following is not effective in Egg Power? It makes eggs hatch faster, helps catch a hatch-strong Pokemon, it makes eggs easier to find. Well... Hatching strong Pokemon is completely not connected to picnics. It makes them hatch faster, I do know that, and I know it makes them easier to find. So, hatch hatching stronger Pokemon is entirely based off of Destiny Knots and uh, Everstones, if I remember correctly. Because it's been a while since I've bred, you know, Pokemon, but I do remember it was something that you could do way before Egg Power was a thing. And also, Flame Body's gone, which is weird. I, I still can't understand that part, but it's just weird that that's gone, because that used to be a big thing when it came to breeding. What is a simple yet important tactic for increasing the effectiveness of meal powers? Make food more often, make food at home, make food with others. Apparently make food with others, based on what we learned. What is the correct action to take when your adorable Pokemon becomes dirty? Well, Pokemon Dash, <laughs> that's a video game. Pokemon Wish, that's also a game. Pokemon Wash, obviously. This is a question about Academy Rules. Should you change your uniform tops and bottoms to properly match each season? 
You should, but it doesn't matter. So, it doesn't really matter. Hopefully that I don't get docked for that, because I really don't wear them based on the season. I'm gonna wear, wear the winter one literally year-round, because it's the best out outfit out of all of them, in my honest opinion. So, yeah. If that says anything, because, uh, yeah, there's not much option when it comes to the school uniforms. I wish you could color them at least, because at least then you'd have some semblance of customization, but you really can't customize with the colors, because you'll look really, really mismatched with some items. So, yeah, a little unfortunate, but it is definitely a hindrance to customization. And customization was really, really good before this game. So, a little unfortunate that, you know, it got hindered with the uniforms. Because you really could have had more to do, honestly. Because I could be like, you know, if I wanted to, maybe I wanted a full purple uniform or something. You can't do that. Because you've been completely, you know, forced to wear the main uniforms. Because the thing is, is the colors don't really match with a lot of other colors that you can buy. So, a little unfortunate. And then if you're playing on uh, Scarlet, you have to wear a lot more reds, whites, and then kind of blacks. So you can kind of wear red, white, and black. And then in this game, you can kind of wear yellow, black, white, and purple. There's not really many to work with. Because there's not really, you know... Much to really match with the costumes, to be honest. But, eh, nothing I could really do, but it is a little unfortunate. I will have to mention that, for sure. Well, let's continue, though. Oh, time for answer questions come to an end. Please stop writing. Made the question a little easier than I planned to. It's a way of saying thank you for informing me about the Rotom cases. Trust you that it gave uh, this exam everything you had. So you will not have to retake it. Please remember to ask for your scores at the front desk before leaving for today. Okay. So hopefully I got 100 out of 100 again because I really don't think I should get docked for that last one. Because that's more of an opinion thing. But feels great to take a test out of the or get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass a midterm exam, four questions correct to pass the final exams. Let's see how you did on your home economics test. You answered 5 out of 5, meaning we got a complete A for the class. Or we can also say an S rank if you want, but we just... That's not bad. 10 out of 10. Although they were easy, but honestly, I'll take it. That's passing score. Congratulations. Mr. Sagwara asks us to give this reward to a student who passes the exam. Oh, five more of my EXP candies. So cool, I'll take that. And then he should be open now. Let's see here. Yep, there he is. Okay, so that's how you do it. So, cool. Now we know for sure how that works. Which is what we needed. So, cool. Okay. So, basically, finish their class, then you can do it um, for their storyline. Or to progress their storyline further. So, basically, try not to talk to them until you finish their classes, basically, for us. Since we accidentally did Sagawaro's first one early, because, well, we didn't know that we were forced to do the whole class first in order to progress it. Okay. Well, good to know, at least. Let's see what's going on with Mr. Sagawaro now that we're free to talk to him normally. Oh, hello, Master Spooks, class of one day. It's been a whole, um, some time since the last, uh, met. I guess so. You were to eat as well. Yep, starving. I just kind of wandered in. Um, I kind of just wandered in, to be honest. Huh, drawn by the irresistible Romans, I imagine. I guess so. I myself am here to survey the student cafeteria, let's say. Which makes sense. I'm observing the nutritional content of the food that our students partake of on a regular basis. Hmm, interesting. One item on the menu here that I'm particularly interested in is the peanut butter sandwich. It's sweet and quite delicious. It's pretty good, honestly. Although, that's not really something I eat very often, but it is pretty good. 
Yeah, perhaps I will order one right now. Oh look, it's Mr. Saguaro. He's so fashionable and cool. Yeah, he's pretty fashionable. I guess the teachers come to the cafeteria too, huh? Do you think he'll have an egg sandwich? No way. If he gets anything here, it'll definitely be something spicy like the five alarm sandwich. Five alarm? Jeez, that sounds spicy. Oh, he's so cool. They'll definitely get the wild and spicy five alarm sandwich. I don't see him as a spicy dude. I'm gonna be honest. I see him like more sweet things like that peanut butter and jelly. Just because it makes a little bit more sense for him to, you know, like the little bit more sweeter, sweeter foods because, well, let's be honest, he's kind of a sweet dude. But maybe he does like spicy. I honestly don't know, honestly. But it would make more sense for him to like the peanut butter and jelly though. Just because I kind of see jelly with the coloring of his shirt. Just to be honest, I, I know that's a weird thing but to say, but I think it, that could be a clear indicator on what he likes better when it comes to the two. Because he could wear something red and be spicy, but when it comes to video games, you can tell the personality of somebody based on their clothes in a lot of these games for some reason. I don't know why they do that that way, but based on like how they look or how they dress, you can kind of tell what they like. But it's, it's a nice little thing to kind of figure out a character, because it helps understand somebody a little bit on a more outward manner in these games. That doesn't work in real life, but in video games that is a thing. But let's see. Oh, he's actually golden spicy. Uh, could I have a five alarm sandwich? Do enjoy the thrill spicy food. Um... But, Mr. Sargawaro, what about... Yeah, what about your your other sandwich? Oh, oh yeah. You should just have peanut butter sandwich, Mr. Smoots. Suppose I shall have to try one, if you insist. There we go. We saved him his sandwich. I guess I could eat the five-alarm sandwich if he doesn't like it. I like spicy. Oh, that was close. I almost for forced myself to order some spice. Least favorite flavors. Huh, interesting. So he doesn't like spicy at all. Okay, but it said least favorite, so he'll still eat it. But it's good we saved him there. Oh, uh, thank you for restraining me, Master Spooks. Seems that the students tend to view me as fashionable, cool, or even dare I say it, suiting a sort of brooding strength. Well, hmm, I guess I could kind of see that, like kind of like powerful aura from him, just based on the way he looks with the hair and his mustache, but. Honestly, you can get whatever you want, dude. You don't have to worry about anybody else. Um, I have a habit of acting out in such a way as not to destroy your image of me. I don't think that would really affect your image, eating food that you want to eat. But, sure. I think it's more based on your personality. If you show that you're not the same person as they see when it comes to personality-wise, then... They might turn on you a little bit, but I think you're fine if you, on the way you eat, I don't think you have to have a five alarm sandwich to get their attention, to be honest, or I don't think that would change their view of them, but huh, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm surprised that they wanted him to eat something spicy, because that's kind of just up to choice when it comes to that. If your taste buds like spicy, then you eat spicy. Showed my true colors to you just now. Without even thinking, please keep the secret between us. Why does it need to be a secret? You became even closer with Mr. Saguaro. Okay, I don't understand why you're worried about that one. Because food's just something that shouldn't really matter. But, huh. Uh, please feel free uh, to relax your mind if you wish. No need to concern yourself with me. Okay, well, that means that we need to move to another area then. Okay. Well, let's see where he is now. Looks like he moved to the staff room. Okay. So let's head over to the staff room and continue off with his storyline here. Because it seems like, obviously, his next place is, well, a place we've been to before, but it's been a while since we've been in here. Just make sure we don't talk to anybody on accident, because, let's be honest here, we might start a storyline on accident if we do. Um, uh, Mr. Spooks. Hey, Sargawaro. There's something that I would uh, very much like to ask your help with. You need my help? Uh, what is it? Yeah, what is it, Mr. Saguaro? Well, you see, 
Do not want anyone overhearing this, but... I hear rumors of an incredibly sweet condiment that is somewhere in the Paldea region. Absolutely must experience that ambrosial uh, sweetness for myself. Ambrosial sweetness for yourself, you say? You are the only one who knows of my sensual sweet tooth. Thus, I have no one else that I can turn for, to, for help on this matter. Okay, yeah, we can help you out. I think I should have the ingredients, I think. Unless it's a sandwich ingredient that I don't have, but I think I pretty much have everything when it comes to the ones that you have to physically buy. But, I guess we'll find out. Oh, uh, can I go looking for this condiment myself, lest I destroy the image of students have me? I'll pay you for the troubles, of course. Give it some thought if this, uh, piques your interest, of course. Okay. In the meantime, I'll gather what information I can about this incredibly sweet condiment. I will share what I find with you as soon as I have more detailed information. You feel trusted by Mr. Sagawaro? Okay. So he wants us to find him something sweet. Well, let me look in my ingredients. Because I should have something like that. From what I've done so far. Well, I got the sweet herb of Mystica. A legendary comment told... Of only in books, word has it tastes a sweet flavor, simulates a digestive system, and cures lack of appetite. He might like that. I have quite a little bit about it. I had to do a little bit of, uh, you know, time, time manipulation to be able to actually do solo raids. I think that's fair if you're doing solo. But this is all the stuff I've been able to get. You get this from doing the six star raids. But... Honestly, not a lot. I still have yet to get any ability patches, which I don't understand why. Because the ability patches, I'd like at least to have one at least, but I still have yet to get at least one of those, which is a little unfortunate. Because right now, I'm working with about 14 of these ability capsules, and there's really no really use for them at the current moment for me. A hidden ability would be really, really good, though, for... My, you know, my six-star raid Pokemon Vendetta here. Because being able to completely, you know, get rid of the worry of my stats dropping would definitely be good. And plus it raises my stats for my attack if somebody tries to lower them. So that would really be nice, but I really don't have it. But the Sundialape's really, really good though. For it. It's the only Pokemon I've had any success in doing solo raids with. Which is really unfortunate, but it's all I really have. But let's see if we're good here. No, we have to go do the next area. But we should be good, I think, for Mr. Sagawaro. And it looks like his bubble is up, so we just have to head over to Home Economics. But what I think we'll do is we'll finish off Sagawaro, like here. We'll get him all finished, and then we'll end off the episode so we can start with the next teacher in the next one and then be able to finish that teacher in the same episode because i think that would work better if we do it that way because we accidentally start started sagawaro early because it's kind of a little bit segmented and i don't want it to be segmented for the other teachers if we can help it but let's continue with mr sagawaro and hopefully finish him off here oh uh, miss spooks about the matter in which i need your help I have discovered the name of the incredibly sweet condiment. It is called Sweet Herba Mystica. Okay, so I do have the right one. Okay, good. If you should find it during the course of treasure up, I'll be grateful if you would. Share some with me. Of course. Well, we kind of already have it for you, so I hope you like it. Uh, Mr. Spooks, have you anything to report about Sweet Herba Mystica? Yep, we already have it. Give Saguaro, Mr. Saguaro some of your sweet herb and mystica. Yes, see your survey. Here you go, buddy. I have two of them. He handed over a shaker of sweet herb and mystica. Oh, we even made it into... Oh, that's interesting. So we actually, like, grinded it up for him. Oh, so this is, uh, sweet herb and mystica. Must say, yeah. Must grade something with it right away. Well, I hope you like it. Because I'm not really sure how you're going to be able to, you know, make it into a sandwich. It's so very sweet. My wood ambrosial, ambrosial sweetness is it like sweeter honey. Much sweeter honey indeed. Yes, if um, honey sweetness has 
Multiply by 100! Um, hey, Mr. Saguaro. What you eating? Uh, uh. Smells super sweet. And you look so happy eating it. Well, obviously, he would eat, like eating something sweet. It's Sometimes eating sweet things are better than eating spicy. It really depends on the mood, honestly. Oh, uh, no, no. You, uh, see, uh, there's a reason for this. You don't look like someone who likes sweets, but that's all pretty cool. There you go, buddy. See, you don't have to eat whatever everyone else wants you to eat. Uh, pretty cool, you say? Yep, pretty cool indeed. Um, I haven't spent my entire life uh, trying to maintain the image that others have to me. But now I see that it's possible to re reconcile the difference between the, my outward appearance and my inner love of sweets. <laughs> well then, Mr. Spooks, here's a reward for your efforts, as promised. You obtained a slowpoke cup. Slowpoke cup? Oh, it's for picnics. Okay. A cup for big time Pokemon fans. Kids will happily drink out of it. Make it? Um, making it a boon to parents. Okay then. So, basically a decoration, but cool. So, that's interesting. Uh, thanks to you. It's able to have a most electrically sweet experience. Whatever. I even feel that my narrow mind of views have broadened never so slightly. Please set my heart to some things. No problem, Mr. Saguaro. You formed a close bond with Mr. Saguaro, meaning you're indeed done with him. Because once we hit those closest bonds, that's when we know for sure. You know, anywhere where with exceptional sweets, very much appreciate that information. No problem, Mr. Saguaro. We can definitely help you there at any other point. But for right now, now we know we're completely done with you. But the thing is, before we do end today's episode, I just wanted to show you this. So, the only Pokemon we do not have in yet is the Legendaries. So anything from 392 to 396. One being, obviously, Gimme Ghoul's evolution. That's 100%. But that means there is four legendary Pokemon for sure. One for each region, and I did find where you find them. Thing is, is they are obviously tied to those stakes that are in the ground all over the map. But each one is very pretty easy to find. One is right in this exact location, in the Sakurai Trail. Another one is at Fury Falls, right inside the waterfall. I found all these without actually looking them up, which was pretty interesting. I'm surprised about that one. Um, there's one right here, over in this first area. I actually found this like in between the first and the second episodes, which was interesting. Or actually, was it first and second, or... No, it was second and third, I think, because it we didn't really. It was around that time where, right before we got to Mexicoza, but um, the final one was right in this little spot right here specifically. It's really, really kind of hard to find, but it's on the side of the mountain here. But yeah, apparently they're pretty easy to find. Only thing is, is well, in order to complete Mr. Jacques' storyline, we need to complete our Pokedex. And obviously, that'll be the final thing we do, which is going to be very interesting for an episode, because, you know, we're, you know, most mo most of these stories don't go to collecting all the Pokemon, because obviously there's no story tied to it most of the time. But because there was a little bit of story tied to it, obviously I don't mind doing it. But we still got a little bit more coins to go before we can do Gimme Ghoul. But that'll obviously be the final thing we do. Just because, obviously, there's no reason to do it yet. Until, you know, we're needing to do it. But it's still cool, though. Nonetheless, that we're getting to that point. The only thing is, is when we do get to that point, it's the end of the series. Because there's going to be nothing left to do until there's a DLC or another part of the story in the later future. Because obviously, well, let's be honest here, there's three Pokemon that are not in the game, and they'll come eventually, we just don't know when. So hopefully, there is another story. But, I don't know how they're going to do it. But, with that being said, thank you all for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day. In the next episode, we will be starting on the next teacher of our storylines when it comes to the Youth Academy stories. 
and honestly, preparing for closer and closer to the end of our series in general. So, with that being said, thank y'all for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day, keep being spooky, and peace out. Hey boys and girls, thank y'all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank y'all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.